I'm Matt. And I'm Robert. We are looking to be dads. Yeah, can't wait. How I met Robert. I met Robert through an online dating service and I actually messaged him and lo and behold, we started chatting and texting and then eventually I asked him on a first date and it went from there, we actually went and played frisbee golf. The frisbee golf thing. I had to research how to play frisbee golf before I went to this. It was it was going to be bad if I didn't, but but I want I wanted to make sure that he was into some of the things that I was into to see if it would progress any further, and it was just perfect. That was the first date, and then ever since then, I pretty much never left his side, and I hear about it all the time. But he never went home. I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, that, that day I was like, I really like this guy, you know, I, he's, he's something different for me. And, uh, you know, we went our separate ways that night and then I saw him the next day and the following day and the day after that and maybe a break in between once, once. when he went for work, <laughs> but now, and, uh, here we are again, you know, it's almost five years later. So I grew up in Alabama. Um, I was the youngest of six. Uh, we didn't we didn't have a whole lot growing up, but we never wanted for anything. I had a my parents were fantastic. They they worked hard to give us what we need. So you know, at that point in time, we we didn't know anything different. We didn't know we were missing out on anything. And looking back on it, um, had a really good childhood. Um, growing up in that way gave me an appreciation of of family, and I always wanted that. I just didn't know if it was going to happen for us. While being in Alabama, I realized, you know, maybe this is not the, the best spot for me to kick off a career or better myself. So I joined the Navy. And then um, from then on, I got to see the world and seen 21 countries, lived in multiple states, got an education, and here I am today. It was really a great experience and you know, it was twofold. I was able to do something to help as well as get out of Alabama, better myself. You know, I was the first person to set foot on another country. And to me, that was like, that was really emotional for me and that was a big... Accomplishment. That was a big accomplishment for me, you know, being the first one to step out of the country, being somewhere where I thought I never would be. I grew up in, I was born in Florida, but then after about six months, my parents relocated for work to Rhode Island. And then after about a year and a half, the only state that I remember living in was Texas. We grew up in the suburbs north of Dallas area. I can honestly say that I grew up in a very healthy childhood and I didn't realize how well they did as parents growing up. I picked up on sports and my parents supported everything with to do with that. I played soccer growing up, both recreationally and then I took on club afterwards and played varsity in high school. But after that, I kind of gave it up. Went to Texas A&M University. Uh, I got my undergraduate in marketing. I decided I wanted to continue on with my schooling at the time. And I ended up just going straight into graduate school to get my master's as well from Texas A&M University. And I got my master's in marketing again, but this time it had an emphasis on pricing analytics. So um, once, I, once I got out of the Navy, I went to school, uh, used some of the uh, Montgomery GI Bill funds to, to help pay for school. And at that point in time, I thought business and marketing was going to be, be the way to go. Coming out, I took a job with a lighting manufacturer, just doing quotes, kind of just bottom of the rung in this industry I knew nothing about. I had a really a knack for that, the electric side. You know, a lot of it tied back for me being in the Navy where I worked not only on the equipment, the intelligent equipment, but also maintained it. So I got to use some of those skills. Never really thought I'd go back into an electrical engineering type role. But, you know, from there I realized I really enjoyed what I was doing and right now I work for an electric utility company as a key account manager. It seems to be the place where I fit the most. I've got a knack for it, you know. So it's, I enjoy what I do. 
we decided to get engaged. At that time, uh, gay marriage was not allowed in Texas. So, you know, after Matt proposed, we decided to open up and start looking at places. That was before, you know, the big gay marriage was, you know, legalized for a lot of places. So we looked at our options. We started looking for work. Once we knew we were moving to Oregon, we got uh, married ten months later. But before, but before we moved to Oregon, though, once we found out we were going to Oregon, I started planning our engagement or my proposal, and it took about three months because I wanted to do something special, something big, uh, because that's my personality. I worked with about twenty-five of our friends in Houston, and then 30, 40 people outside of. Houston that would be able to make the drive in and I made videos I met at our apartment when Robert was gone I and we were practiced this dance routine and ultimately I ended up proposing to Robert in a flash mob proposal how we got to Colorado well you know like we when we were in Oregon we made an agreement with each other can we do one year, we do one year? and we did our year uh, maybe Eugene, Oregon wasn't the the best place for us, but we we weren't really actively looking for anything. Um, fortunate for us, uh, Matt's company had a merger; they were bought out, and the position that was offered to him was here in Colorado, and we we jumped on it. And uh, for me, with my experience, it was very easy. I had a job lined up as I was coming in, just transferring over. And so when we, uh, when we got here, we're like, what do we do? We don't know anyone. We don't know where to go. So, um, I mean, we, we took that blind leap of faith. And I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll move. It was all paid for. And it was, it was a little bit even more so blind because they allowed us to travel to Colorado to kind of make a pre-decision trip. And then on our pre-decision trip, it just so happened to have about 12 to 18 inch blizzard happen during that yeah. time. So we couldn't really go anywhere, see anything to kind of make up our, a better uh, decision because we were stuck in the hotel because we couldn't really go anywhere. But it was by far the easiest move we've ever made. When we found this place, you know, we, we had been looking for a lot of places, but this was, you know, just four miles, 10 minutes from downtown. Uh, we have access to the light rail station. Um, coming through, it's a new neighborhood. We knew that they were building a park in the center, you know, with, with water features and swing sets and all activities for the kids. And it's a very family-oriented neighborhood. And just, you know, right across the street, they'll be building a new K-8 school coming up that we would be able to utilize. So at this time, when we were looking to move out of downtown, we knew we wanted to be close enough. We knew we wanted to be somewhere that would be kid friendly, where we could raise a child in a good home. And it, it really worked out that we were able to build this place with everything that we want. And it has everything that we would need moving forward with the family. So why adoption? I guess I'll start with that question. Um, one of our biggest goals in life is to become parents. That's my biggest goal. That's Robert's biggest goal. And I. I truly believe that together, like our household is going to be so much fun, so much laughter and to bring in a child into our house and to provide that kind of positive interactions. I can't find a bigger word to describe how happy that would make me um, besides just unconditional love. And I can't wait to spread that on to uh, our future child. I see Robert as a father between the two of us. One, unconditional love no matter what. Uh, two, like I said, he's going to be more of the disciplinarian of the two of us just because I like to joke nonstop. And sometimes that you need a little bit of discipline in order to teach life lessons. And that's the one thing that excites me the most about Robert is that he's just going to make sure that this child, no matter what they run into, is going to know that they can succeed in anything in life. I think Matt is going to be the best friend dad. He's going to be the carpool dad. He's going to be the... I, I, I imagine I might have to pull Matt away from doing the complete science project type of dad. You know, he uh, we, we already talk about this and it's... 
we already talk about how we see something and we're like, I'm like, that's going to be you. And he's like, that's going to be you. And we, we've kind of got this figured out, but by no means is that going to hold true. Once we hold a baby in our arms, everything may change from what we think is going to happen. But I know, like, for me, what Matt has done for me is made me feel like a better person. Is really changed the way I think to be more of a positive person to, you know, know that there's really no limits. He's encouraged me more than anybody ever has in my entire life. And I know he's going to encourage our son or daughter to do the, do the exact same thing. No matter how long the wait is, I know when it happens. It's going to be worth it. It's, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be our biggest accomplishment. Yeah. I'll wait forever, but I know it'll happen.